Vietnam's GDP grows by 5.18% in the first half of this year. Responsible tourism for long-term development. Hello, I'm Ling Hong from Hanoi and welcome back to Bizline. We'll kickstart our program right away with several highlights on the economic scene for the past week. Vietnam's Minister of Industry and Trade Vu Huy Hoang met on June 27th with the EU Trade Commissioner Karel de Gouch in Brussels, Belgium. The purpose of this meeting was to further discuss remaining issues in the negotiations of the Vietnam-EU Free Trade Agreement, or FTA. The Vietnam-EU FTA negotiation aimed to remove tax barriers in goods and services, investment and other sectors. After two years with eight negotiation rounds, the two sides have reached consensus across various fields. The EU is expecting to sign the Free Trade Agreement with Vietnam before the end of this year. Vietnam achieved GDP growth of 5.25% in the second quarter of this year, bringing the six-month rate to 5.18%. These figures were announced by the General Statistics Office under the Ministry of Planning and Investment at a press conference in Hanoi on June 28. In the first six months, the combined agricultural and forestry sector accounted for 18%, while the industry and construction and service sectors made up 38 and 43.81% respectively. Meanwhile, the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, rose by 1.38% compared with the same period last year and is expected to enjoy a three-fold increase by the end of this year. The 2014 Vietnam Laos Trade Fair, or Viet Laos Expo 2014, kicked off on Thursday in Vientiane, Laos. Under the framework of the National Trade Promotion in 2014 program, this annual event is being co-organized by the Vietnamese and Laos Ministries of Industry and Trade. The fair provides an opportunity for Vietnamese enterprises to further develop a sales network in Laos and Northeast Thailand. 90 Vietnamese enterprises are taking part in this year's event. The wide range of goods being displayed represent Vietnam's strongest exports, such as agriculture, forestry and aquaculture. The fair runs from July 3rd to 7th. Bingbing currently attracts the most foreign direct investment in Vietnam's south central coastal provinces. During the last six months, Bing Ding has attracted five FDI projects with registered capital of 116.63 million US dollars. The province now has 58 FDI projects in total with almost 1.75 billion US dollars in capital. Bing Ding is highly regarded by foreign investors due to its preferential policies. Most investors come from the United States, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Thailand and France. Because of Japan's strength in views such as transportation, infrastructure, agroforestry, fishery and tourism, Bingding is targeting Japanese businesses as strategic partners. Five Vietnamese enterprises have made it on the list of top 500 most successful retailers in the Asian Pacific region, according to the Retail Asia Publishing. The leading global firm provides information for retail market and Euromonitor and the Journal of Asian Retail. The companies making the list include the Union of Trading Cooperatives, Big C Supermarket Chain, Win Kim Trading Joint Stock Company, Saigon Jewelry Company, and Mobile World Joint Stock Company. The selection of the top 500 retailers in the Asia Pacific region is based on rankings through research and survey results by business enterprises in 14 countries and territories. The criteria for selecting include revenue, growth rate, space for business, and the number of supermarkets the retailers own. Hanoi is ranked 8th among the world's top 10 destinations, according to TripAdvisor. The 1,000-year-old 
capital of Vietnam, is home to hundreds of historical and cultural sites. One of visitors' favorite activities in Hanoi is to walk around the old quarter to watch everyday life and enjoy the rich culture of the city. Hanoi also has several new urban areas with sophisticated architectural design, skyscrapers and international standard trade centers. Hanoi is expecting to welcome 2.8 million international visitors and 16 million domestic guests by the end of this year. Those are the highlights in the economic scene for the past week. Up next, we'll talk about the prospects of responsible tourism in Vietnam in our crosstalk. In the next 20 minutes, we'll talk about a trend or practice in tourism that is vital for the sector in crisis management and develop sustainably in the long term. That is responsible tourism. We have here in our studio Mr. Kai Patel, a specialist of ESRT project, which stands for Environmentally and Socially Responsible Tourism Capacity Development Program funded by European Union. But first, let's start with a report on Vietnamese tourism sector in the first half of 2014. According to research by the Department of Tourism under the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, Vietnam welcomed 4.2 million international tourists in the first half of 2014, a 21.11% increase compared with the same period last year. Also, there were 23.4 million domestic tourists, an increase of 6.9%. And revenue from tourism reached 5 billion US dollars, a year on year increase of 22.5%. The period breakdown shows a growth in the number of international tourists coming to Vietnam in the first four months of this year, thanks to the country's efforts to promote itself as a safe and friendly destination with numerous international events. However, since early May, tension in the EC caused by China's illegal acts have had a dampening effect on Vietnamese tourism. The number of international visitors, especially Chinese-speaking tourists, has dipped, affecting the sector overall. In response to this situation, the Vietnamese tourism sector has developed a strategy of crisis management and sustainable development, focusing on communication and training in responsible tourism. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. First of all, what's the definition of responsible tourism? You hear a lot about responsible tourism um, when you talk about codes of conducts or energy efficiency, corporate social responsibility. But when you look closer in the issue, it's nothing really new to it. Responsible tourism offers a pathway to minimize negative impacts of tourism and create positive challenges. So that can go into um, supporting the local environment and society through responsible actions. It fosters a, a viable um, long-term benefits for the, for the industry, for the businesses. And uh, it attracts uh, also tourists w with this um, safe and stable um, tourism environment. Responsible tourism um, requires all of us to work together, from managers to staff, and uh, through to government uh, authorities. So all of these stakeholders need to take care and part in the responsible tourism development for uh, the industry. Mm -hmm. You said the concept of responsible tourism is not a new one. So how long has the concept been around? It has been around for quite a while, like uh, the United Nations World Tourism Organization in uh, 1988 um, they already defined the sustainable tourism concept. So um, the problem is more that the uh, governments have historically struggled to achieve growth in tourism and in the same time sustainability to it. So this is uh, when the responsible tourism act, um, concept came into place, where it actually gives you more um, uh, a concept to responsibility that everyone in the industry needs to take a part of it. Could you give us some example that distinguish uh, tourism from responsible tourism? Yes, when you uh, look at the 
uh, the mainstream tourist. You imagine it's a tourist that goes to a resort, uh, maybe foreign, wholly foreign uh, owned, and he bought a package um, also maybe from a foreign uh, tour operator. Um, it, the tourist, mainstream tourist, doesn't interact a lot with the um, local uh, community. And on the opposite, uh, you have the responsible traveler that might uh, interact more with the locals, mm -hmm. um, goes and stays in uh, hotels which are more run locally, and uh, interacts also uh, with the um, environment uh, better through the activities, uh, walking, climbing, hiking, cycling. So you have different forms of traveler. Here you might look at a, a, a mainstream operator that looks at profit in the first place. Talking about large-scale um, resource, you would imagine, okay, that might be an example of um, not being responsible. But when the resort uh, um, employs local people and creates training opportunities for the staff, isolates uh, the rooms um, well, and uh, has maybe a recycling program in place, looks at the wastewater management. I, I wouldn't say that's uh, irresponsible. The practice of responsible tourism is already common practice in many countries and has resulted in positive outcomes for both the environment and the community. Let's look at the South Asian country of Bhutan, for example. The Bhutan Tourism Board requires a daily tariff which applies to all international visitors so that the number of tourists visiting Bhutan is kept to an environmentally manageable level and is in accordance with the infrastructure's capacity. The government of Myanmar and the Myanmar Ministry of Hotels and Tourism issued a responsible tourism policy in September 2012 which regulates stakeholders in practicing responsible tourism. TripAdvisors has launched its Green Leaders Scheme, which aims to identify hotels and B&Bs that are committed to green practices like recycling, water efficiency and alternative energy. So the key to responsible tourism is understanding and accepting responsibility. So whose responsibility is it? Responsible tourism is uh, all about making tra the travel and tourism forms more responsible. So everyone can take a part in it. For the um, employer, for example, he could uh, look at uh, gender balance policies or non-discrimination policies in the workplace. On the other side, invest into capacity building and staff enhancement. For the tourist, it's also about learning about cultural norms and traditions and not damaging the environment. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, many actually uh, stakeholders involved in the responsible tourism approach. So what are the benefits of responsible tourism? Uh, responsible tourism has a strong business case to it. It can add value to your product. Um, it saves you money actually by minimizing uh, energy costs. Um, it is something, something that the customer is already demanding for as he sees um, and values the, uh, the support for the local community and environment. So um, when you look at the, um, the reputation through responsible tourism actions, that in the long term can also add to the brand of your company and of your product, which then uh, goes to repeat visitation for um, your, your company and, try and increase sales. So those are economic benefits. So what are the social and environmental benefits that responsible tourism can bring? Well, looking at the social dimension, um, you have here the chance to keep the staff. It um, creates some, some pride in, in the business and uh, motivation, which leads then back to a better customer service and uh, quality of the overall product. It also um, supports communities, the socially responsible tourism, um, and your business might be better accepted by the locals when you purchase locally from local suppliers, and that gives you also a good reputation within the community. Mm -hmm. 
you have on the other side the environment, of course, and uh, I mean the, the main asset of tourism is to have uh, its nature right. and uh, protecting the nature and uh, investing even through responsible tourism projects into nature uh, mm -hmm. protection. I think this is uh, something very important where responsible tourism can add something um, to, to it. And now let's take a close look at Vietnam's case, where, as you know, uh, Vietnam's economy is, have, is facing some certain difficulties, and uh, Vietnam's tourism is also experiencing some decline in the number of international tourists coming to the country. Why is it important for Vietnam to promote um, responsible tourism in the country? Um, so the World Economic uh, Forum, um, they have the Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Report, and they show indicate that um, Vietnam needs to work on a sustainable in a sustainable way why is that so um, because um, it is a fairly new destination on the market and it has naturally um, seen tourist growth but uh, it's like the product life cycle um, you will also see a decline when you don't take care of the product so adding um, to uh, a uh, high quality product uh, through responsible actions um, helps the tourism uh, sector to, to grow further. Of course, there will be always some limitations uh, once the sector emerges, but um, it all requires um, actions, and here, responsible tourism is, could be a solution to it. For a few years now in Vietnam, tours that are designed to include a real-life experience of local culture and traditions have attracted tourists. Some of the most popular activities include the farming experience tour where visitors homestay with local families and use services provided by locals like this horse-drawn carriage tour in the Mekong Delta region. Tourists have an interesting experience. The local culture and tradition is promoted, and income is generated for the local community. Environmentally friendly products tend to be more expensive than normal ones. Say, hybrid cars are more expensive than the normal ones of the same uh, size, same model. Is it the case to responsible tourism? Is it more expensive, uh, more costly to implement uh, responsible tourism than normal tourism? Well, there's many actions that don't cost a, a cent. So you can really um, already apply responsible tourism actions very quickly uh, at no cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's more about changing uh, mindsets of people um, and that uh, can take for quite a lo uh, long time. Uh, of course, when you invest into um, such forms in green technology uh, for energy efficiency, then it is at the beginning um, expensive, but in the long term it will pay off. Then it adds also value to your product and to your brand and uh, makes uh, possible repeat visitation because uh, the guests, is, uh, they are demanding for it and they, they value also your, um, your efforts. You have talked a lot about tour operators and uh, tourism, other companies in the tourism sector. So how can we engage local community to contribute to responsible tourism? Um, it's all about um, effective management at destination level. Uh, meaning you have to ensure that uh, government authorities uh, with the communities and local stakeholders cooperate on destination management issues um, such as visitor information or um, so supply chains and here I think we should not only focus on um, the short-term profit mm -hmm. for uh, businesses but uh, also look at um, a means how to share um, profit uh, through the supply chain so that local communities also benefit from it but on the other side they also take, a, take part um, in showing their responsibility and that can be achieved through um, collaborative forums in destination management, steering committees or other um, legalized forms of 
coordination. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your team's efforts in terms of capacity development in uh, Vietnam's tourism industry when it comes to responsible tourism. The EU program is um, responsible tourism program is aiming at building capacities in responsible tourism, right? So um, it is here to look at all um, elements of the service chain, uh, starting from governments to businesses and also to tourists. Um, and here um, we have developed a training seminar uh, which aims at all these stakeholders and covers areas from product development, communication and marketing, responsible employment, to um, policy making, uh, communities in action, and also um, responsible supply chain management. So these capacity building seminars are carried out through all Vietnam for communities and for tour operators and the accommodation sector, as well as for the authorities. Mm -hmm. So we have seen in many cases that, um, let's see, the low-end hospitality um, uh, sector, they have no formal education in hospitality and tourism. So most of them don't know about these best practices. Mm -hmm. And it's about just showing good practice mm -hmm. and maybe the one and the other can make a positive change. Mm -hmm. With an implementation period of 2011 to 2015, the environmentally and socially responsible tourism capacity development program funded by the European Union has a budget of 12.1 million euros. The project is targeting three main areas policy support and institutional strengthening, product competitiveness and public-private partnerships, and vocational education and training in the tourism sector. Among these, the vocational and skill training seminars have been hugely successful. So far, they have been held in more than 20 provinces across Vietnam and have had a great impact on raising the awareness of both tourists and community members while promoting positive actions in each destination. Trên thực tế thì không phải tất cả chúng ta đều có cái cơ hội để đến được với những cái cơ sở đào tạo về một cách bài bản và chuyên nghiệp, ví dụ như đến các trường đại học. Thế thì khi mà có một cái chính sách phát triển cách rộng khắp và nó có cái tính chất lan tỏa, bởi vì ở đây các bạn sẽ nhìn thấy một thực tế đấy là dự án xây dựng một cái năng lực là đào tạo thông qua các đào tạo viên và các đào tạo viên được trang bị về mặt kiến thức, được trang bị về mặt nghề, kiến thức nghề nghiệp, kỹ năng nghề nghiệp và đặc biệt nữa là có một cái, cái cách nhìn nhận về việc phát triển có du lịch, uh, du lịch có trách nhiệm. thì như vậy thì chúng ta sẽ thấy là cái sức lan tỏa của nó sẽ sẽ lớn hơn và nó không chỉ dừng lại ở những cái khu đô thị du lịch, nó không chỉ dừng lại ở các thành phố lớn mà các đào tạo viên này nó sẽ có cái cái tính lan tỏa nó sẽ đưa được ở những cái kiến thức mới này và những cái hiểu biết after these seminars, the tour guides will then become tourism ambassadors who spread the word about socially and environmentally responsible tourism to visitors and local communities. Um, tell us more about the ESRT project and how, what are the results that your team is, ex uh, is expecting? Um, to see? The ESRT program is um, working in three different areas in institutional strengthening, competitiveness and vocational uh, education and training. And within all these um, areas we try to incorporate responsible tourism um, strategies and practices. So we are looking here at the Vietnam tourism marketing strategy for example where we try to bring in also some responsibility such as looking also at the domestic traveler and not only at international travelers this is very important it's mm -hmm. a big market already then we have uh, the area of destination management at local level at provincial or interprovincial level and we support here with public private dialogue bring stakeholders together and address uh, key issues of sustainability and uh, here we already see some success. Well thank you very much for spending time with us today. Thank you.
By 2015, tourism and travel is expected to become Vietnam's single largest player, contributing to approximately 15% of the national workforce and approximately 1.4 million direct jobs. Sustainable and responsible approach is vital to fully develop the sector while protecting the environment for our future generation. And that wraps up our Beastline this week. Thank you very much for being with us. You can go to vtv4.vn to see other programs. And goodbye for now from Hanoi.